and they always said, We and the world, for they believed themselves to be half the world, and the better half too. The duckling thought that others might hold a different opinion of the subject, but the hen would not listen to such doubts. Can you lay eggs? she asked. No. Then you have the goodness to hold your tongue. Can you raise your back or purr or throw out sparks? said the tomcat. No. Then you have no right to express an opinion when sensible people are talking. So the duckling sat in a corner, feeling very low spirited, till the sunshine and the fresh air came into the house through the open door, and then he began to feel such a great longing for a swim on the water that he could not help telling the hen. What an absurd idea! said the hen. You have nothing else to do, therefore you have foolish fancies. If you could purr or lay eggs, they would pass away. But it is so delightful to swim about on the water, said the duckling, and so refreshing to feel it close over your head while you dive down the bottom. Delightful indeed, said the hen. Why, you must be crazy. Ask the cat. He is the cleverest animal I know. Ask him how he would like to swim about on the water or dive under it, for I will not speak of my own opinion. Ask our mistress, the old woman. There is no one in the world more clever than she is. Do you think she would like to swim? or to let the water close over her head? You don't understand me, said the duckling. We don't understand you. Who can understand you, I wonder? Do you consider yourself more clever than a cat, or the old woman? I will say nothing of myself. I don't imagine such nonsense, child, and thank your good fortune that you have been received here. Are you not in a warm room, and in society from which you may learn something? But you are a chatterer, and your company is not very agreeable. Believe me, I speak only for your own good. I may tell you unpleasant truths, but that is a proof of my friendship. I advise you, therefore, to lay eggs, and to learn to purr as quickly as possible. I believe I must go see the world again, said the duckling. Yes, do, said the hen. So the duckling left the cottage, and soon found water on which it could swim and dive, but was avoided by all other animals because of its ugly appearance. Autumn came, and the leaves in the forest turned to orange and gold. Then, as winter approached, the cold caught them as they fell and whirled them in the cold air. The clouds, heavy with hail and snowflakes, hung low in the sky, and the raven stood on the ferns crying, Croak! Croak! It made one shiver with cold to look at him. All this was very sad for the poor duckling. One evening, just as the sun set amid the radiant clouds, there came a large flock of beautiful birds out of the bushes. The duckling had never seen any like them before. They were swans and they curved their graceful necks, while their soft plumage shone with dazzling whiteness. They uttered a singular cry as they spread their glorious wings and flew away from those cold regions to warmer countries across the sea. As they mounted higher and higher in the air, the ugly little duckling felt a strange sensation as he watched them. He whirled himself in the water like a wheel, stretched out his neck towards them, and uttered a cry so strange that it frightened himself. Could he ever forget those beautiful, happy birds, and when at last they were out of sight, he dived under the water and rose again almost beside himself with excitement. He knew not the names of these birds, nor where they had flown, but he felt towards them as he had never felt for any other bird in the world. He was not envious of these beautiful creatures, but wished to be as lovely as they. Poor ugly creature! How gladly he would have lived even with the ducks had they only given him encouragement. The winter grew colder and colder. He was obliged to swim about on the water to keep it from freezing but every night the space on which he swam became smaller and smaller. At length it froze so hard that the ice in the water crackled as he moved, and the duckling had to paddle with his legs as well as he could to keep the space from closing up. He became exhausted at last, and lay still and helpless, frozen fast in the ice. Early in the morning, a peasant who was passing by saw what had happened. He broke the ice in pieces with his wooden shoe and carried the duckling home to his wife. The warmth revived the poor little creature, but when the children wanted to play with him, the duckling thought they would do him some harm, so he started up in terror, fluttered into the milk pan, and splashed the milk about the room. Then the woman clapped her hands, which frightened him still more. He flew first into the butter cask, and then into the meal tub, and out again. What a condition he was in! The woman screamed, and struck him with the tongs. The children laughed and screamed, and tumbled all over each other in their efforts to catch him, but luckily he escaped. The door stood open, the poor creature could just manage to slip out among the bushes and lie down quite exhausted in the newly fallen snow. It would be very sad were I to relate all the misery and privations which the poor duckling endured during the hard winter, but when it had passed, he found himself lying one morning in a moor amongst the rushes. He felt the warm sun shining and heard the lark singing and saw that all around was beautiful spring. 
Then the young bird felt that his wings were strong, as he flapped them against his sides and rose high into the air. They bore him onwards, until he found himself in a large garden, before he well knew how it had happened. The apple trees were in full blossom, and the fragrant elders bent their long green branches down to the stream, which wound round a smooth lawn. Everything looked beautiful in the freshness of the early spring. From a thicket close by came three beautiful white swans, rustling their feathers and swimming lightly over the smooth water. The duckling remembered the lovely birds, and felt more strangely unhappy than ever. "'I will fly to those royal birds,' he exclaimed, "'and they will kill me, because I am so ugly, and dare approach them. But it does not matter. Better to be killed by them than pecked by the ducks, beaten by the hens, pushed out by the maiden who feeds the poultry, or starved with hunger in the winter.' Then he flew to the water, and swam towards the beautiful swans. The moment they espied the stranger, they rushed to meet him with outstretched wings. "'Kill me!' said the poor bird, and he bent his head down to the surface of the water, and awaited death. But what did he see in the clear stream below? His own image, no longer a dark, grey bird, ugly and disagreeable to look at, but a graceful and beautiful swan. To be born in a duck's nest, in a farmyard, is of no consequence to a bird, if it is hatched from a swan's egg. He now felt glad having suffered sorrow and trouble, because it enabled him to enjoy so much better all the pleasure and happiness around him. For the great swans swam around the new corner, and stroked his neck with their beaks, as a welcome. Into the garden presently came some little children, and threw bread and cake into the water. See, cried the youngest, there is a new one! And the rest were delighted, and ran to their father and mother, dancing and clapping their hands and shouting joyously, There is another swan come! A new one has arrived! Then they threw more bread and cake into the water, and said, The new one is the most beautiful of all. He is so young and pretty. And all the old swans bowed their head before him. Then he felt quite ashamed, and hid his head under his wing, for he did not know what to do. He was so happy, and yet not at all proud. He had been persecuted and despised for his ugliness. And now he heard them say he was the most beautiful of all the birds. Even the elder tree bent down its bows into the water before him, and the sun shone warm and bright. Then he rustled his feathers, curved his slender neck, and cried joyfully, from the depths of his heart, I never dreamed of such happiness as this, while I was an ugly duckling. The Ugly Duckling by Hans Christian Andersen Read for you by Jack Noble <laughs>